which I suppose is why there is criticism about accounting numbers, because we know there are subjective um, decisions that get made within them. And again, this isn't, an, I know in prior semesters when we've talked about, talked about these things and getting some, some of the responses back from you guys about it is, it seems I may be coming on too strong with some of this and saying every company is out to kind of rip you off. They're not, like most, most are doing the right thing, but there are gonna be cases where on the margins, if they can make something happen, they will. Um, and there's concern about accounting numbers and finance people generally stick with cash flows. If you're doing an accounting, a finance major, cash flows are pretty much what you focus on. You try to strip out the accounting effects um, because they don't really trust accounting numbers. Um, and that's primarily because it's not just how the actual company's performing, it's also about the decisions that get made. It's about the residual that you pick for, your depreci for the assets depreciation calculations. It's the useful life. It's the percentage you pick for the long service, long service leave calculation, it's all these, adjust, all these estimates that get made which could be subjective. Um, so this idea that the efficient, you know, policy choice may be legit, like that asset may really only last for 10 years, in which case you've made your best guess at what it could be. Or that asset, I'm just trying to think which way, it depends on what you do, that asset could last for 20 years and you've made it shorter, which is gonna have an effect on your profit um, because you want, that, want it to have that effect on your profit. Now, and the idea from all of this is cash flow is promoted as the alternative measure of performance in which management cannot manipulate the figures. A couple of quotes. We try to identify the discrepancies between what the company has reported and what their cash generation is. Um, and a more recent quote from a research paper, investment advisors advocate comparing earnings to cash flow from operations and consider a wide disparity, a red flag on the basis that cash flow from operations is more real than earnings. So that's saying users, and they're suggesting that users are saying, we believe cash flow from operations much more than what's going on with profit. Um, and even if you see some of the earnings companies come out with nowadays, they talk about cash profits. It's not, that's not a cash flow. That's something they've basically taken profit and stripped out a few things they don't like from it. But have a look at a lot of company announcements nowadays. They talk about cash profits. Um, But it, it isn't entirely true that cash flows are the holy grail of absolute numbers, even though we'd like to think that they are. Um, the first point is, and I was only made aware of this earlier this year, is that for a lot of companies, they don't have the resources to be actually able to say, this is physically how much cash is moving in and out of our business. They just, it, they don't sit down at the end and figure out, you know, we know how much was brought in. Their systems are set up as accrual systems and they actually use what's called the indirect direct approach to estimate their cash flows. So even though you would imagine cash is an absolute number, like you can look in your accounts and you see you've got X, Y, and Z in terms of the cash balances, in terms of how they do some of their cash flows, they actually estimate how they're doing this. So it is, it is still, more objective than absolute profit, but it's not quite as close as what I initially thought it was. The second is um, an Indian, it's, they're in the computing business. Has anyone heard about what happened with Satyan? Sort of, maybe, okay. There was something that didn't, I mean, obviously it's not really good what happened, but, and the guy that was in charge as of Monday, was charged Monday this week with money laundering. So I mean, this is, this is not just they've sort of played around with the numbers, this is just properly fraud which has gone on here. Um, so Mr. Raju said Wednesday, this is going back a few years, um, that $1.4 billion of cash and bank loans just didn't exist. They literally just made numbers up and they used something like 300 different, they, they created 300 different companies to run transactions through and just to make things like it, like that's, that's not accounting manipulation, that's just, that's criminal. So I mean, it's, there is a difference there, but you can't just, 
absolutely look at cash and say that is a rock solid number because there's accounting estimates which do feed into it, plus there's just fraud. Um, so you've got to be a little bit careful. But the point of all this is the numbers which you see when you look at a statement of financial position, when you look at a, a statement of financial performance, and when you look at a cash flow statement, should tell you the same story. That's the idea from this. They should tell you the same story, and if you look at it over the years, it should be telling you a consistent story and not starting to diverge. Um, they are different. Um, and I'll talk about, so they are different, and what this should be is that the information provided should be consistent. Now what I'm saying by that is, if you see a profit trend where it's, actually for you guys, where it's gradually increasing, so just a nice smooth linear increase, I'm not saying the cash flow from operations figure should be the exact same number or just out by a little bit, but increasing. As long as there's, you know, a relative sort of equalness to that trend, if profit is going up and cash flow from operations is going up, so if they're correlated and reasonably well correlated, that's something which you should be starting to look at and go, this, I'm comfortable with this, this seems to tie together. If you're seeing a situation where cash flow from operations is going up and, sorry, profit is going up and cash flow from operations is dropping, and that, that happens in certain situations, the only thing that could be causing that divergence is they're playing around with the accruals. That might be legitimate, but it also might be a, f a red flag that there's something going on here which they're trying to mask a drop in, in real performance. So it's just, as I said, a red flag to maybe investigate further. Um, cash flow and income numbers are both associated with share returns. So, I mean, you would have talked with Rob about income numbers and Ball and Brown and how good profit figures lead to sort of increases in share price. Same with cash flow. They actually did much the same study with cash flows and find the same effect. Um, when you run them together, so when you have cash flow and income, a lot of the effect gets subsumed, gets subsumed. So cash flow, it does provide some additional information to the market over profit, but it's only additional. It's not completely separate information. Something to think about, what are the strengths and weaknesses of cash flow numbers? So why are cash flow numbers good and what situations do they work really well? And what are some of the weaknesses compared to profit? because there are certain things profit do really well and people do pay attention to it. So it's not telling us nothing. 